uh, uh, if we look at India, uh, India's culture, the most uh, things that are close to our heart is that culturally we never throw things away. Even a toothbrush is kept and used multiple times. So, you know, culturally, uh, the whole idea of uh, uh, ESG, the whole idea of uh, how to protect the environment is really very much part of us as a, as a country. Now, the Prime Minister said that the world is witnessing depletion of all types of natural resources. In such a scenario, circular economy is the demand of the hour and we have to make it a mandatory part of our lives. So I think it's a very, very important statement that he made. And I think he also talked about the golden principle of three R's, which is reduce, reuse, recycle. So I think this is something that is super critical if we really want to look at this whole issue of circular economy. And I think if you start to look at one area which is huge in this is electronics, where the, you know, the thinking of people has completely changed over so many years. And here is where this whole new area of uh, 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 repair policy comes in. And uh, I think, uh, Nidhiji, you are chairing the important committee on creating a repair policy. What will be the scope and what kind of timelines are you really looking at? Um, this is uh, actually, I'm, I mean, I'm uh, really privileged to be invited here for uh, this charcha. And I think uh, since the buzz is already out, uh, as soon as Honorable Prime Minister, uh, you know, called for life movement, uh, wherein he emphasized on the need to not only uh, encourage circular economy, but also sustainable uh, consumption by the consumers and also emphasize on the three R's. Uh, we in the Department of Consumer Affairs, we thought that uh, actually uh, we are receiving many complaints on the National Consumer Helpline uh, about the repair. And that actually raised, uh, you know, this uh, concern, how to reach out to these people and make sure that uh, the articles that they are using or uh, they are purchasing uh, they are repaired in time and efficiently. So, uh, a committee has been actually uh, formed uh, with all the stakeholders in place. And uh, this committee has had uh, several rounds of meeting. And we have been able to zero on to, you know, four sectors. That there are four sectors besides the electronics and uh, mobile. Uh, Another sector which is very important is the consumer durables, the white goods, uh, the everyday household goods that we have. Then there is also a sector which is uh, very, very important and that is uh, very crucial for the farmers, which is the farming sector. And the fourth is the automobile sector. Now, these are four uh, different sectors having different requirements of repair. But at the same, uh, I mean, uh, commonly what uh, we all feel as consumers, I mean, in the room also, all of us, we may be doing whatever we are, but uh, we are essentially at the end of the day, a consumer. So, uh, as a consumer, we are dealing with uh, the white goods, the electronics and mobile, and uh, also automobile sector. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, major complaints that we received was, and this is uh, not just, you know, the poor consumers. So I'm talking about those consumers who can afford even a foreign make uh, car, for example. And uh, of late, you must have uh, also heard how a very important uh, brand, a multinational uh, company, simply wrapped up and just vanished. You know, so this has left these uh, very, very privileged uh, consumers uh, totally, you know, high and dry. And what is happening is, uh, if there is a need for even a small repair, very, very small repair, then what happens is you are completely dependent on the import of spare parts. That itself takes about, uh, you know, not less than a month, let us say. And then uh, the repair itself is so exorbitantly 
placed that it is actually leaving our consumers in great distress and harassment so it is not just about poor consumers or you know the regular middle uh, class uh, sector who must be having difficulty in say uh, getting his scooter or motorcycle repair so it is also you know the up class the very upper class which is also facing the same thing so now uh, since the workshop is on uh, improving livelihoods through it i can only say that you know this is going to through a very major uh, you know uh, opportunity for people who are looking for uh, livelihoods because it is going to create uh, multiple layers of livelihood so there will be not only uh, you know small repair shops as we already have and as you have very rightly pointed out that we hardly throw away things so uh, there will be those neighborhood uh, repair shops there will be uh, you know a microcosm of uh, say uh, small entrepreneurs will be spread all over for providing not only third party uh, repair at a reasonable and fair price but it will they will also i mean they have the Uh, you know the bandwidth of actually serving the entire global need if required thank you i think uh, what kind of time frame are you looking at in terms of announcing the policy finally so basically uh, we realize that for these four sectors there'll be different requirements for example uh, now since the manufacturers are basically uh, making the products uh, just so that they fail after a certain time or after a certain age so uh, the uh, you know there will be different age prescribed for different items so that itself will require you know um, different committees to come up so we are in the process of actually for uh, finalizing a zero draft policy on uh, right to repair but i think uh, since we discussed this issue with different stakeholders we understand that there will be different and very unique requirements of uh, uh, you know different sectors and maybe different goods so it will take some time so you'll have to basically treat them separately depending on type of goods yeah yeah and we'll also want to you know engage with the consumers in a big way we would like to engage with the experts uh, in a very big way because uh, i mean how can i uh, say prescribe you know a certain age or you know the modalities of repair so uh, this requires you know a very long uh, a very engaging uh, say discussion with the stakeholders uh, with the innovators in the sector uh, because uh, we do not want to obstruct uh, say the you know the rising uh, say the consumption but at the same time we we also want to protect the consumers from having this uh, you know kind of harassment on a daily basis yeah so as you rightly said earlier earlier concept was that uh, you you create products which built which were built to last now <laughs> products are created for built to fail and they've sort of force uh, consumers to actually change product and typically in a phone type of situation because of an operating system problem you just have to move on to another product now you know a lot of people still say i mean why do we have to get into repair we can easily replace the product we can afford to do it so why worry about it west is doing it all the time should we just not follow the west but i don't think in terms of a circular economy that's the right thing for us and what do you think in terms of the circular economy as such as india's place in the circular Uh, so you are right you know when uh, the uh, the western world uh, started with this mindless uh, consumption and uh, we all thought that you know the more you consume the more uh, you know your economy uh, can show the growth rates but i think uh, now uh, because of the uh, you know heightened or say greater sensitivity towards the climate change issues the issues of Uh, you know uh, making the resources available after all so there is a limit to you know the resources that you can actually put to use so ultimately it requires that uh, 
there will be uh, you know and probably the you know the time has come for this idea to actually gain ground that uh, you know having repair is not a tacky kind of a you know a thing and uh, to uh, to buy or say to have goods which are uh, say uh, second hand or some such thing is not something so uh, it is not that bad maybe it's a very cool way of actually sharing the resources with everybody you know the global citizen uh, to you know to uh, have fun with you know a model which may have outgrown my uh, say happiness but it can work for another person and why not and for another country yeah that's right. so it can go down from uh, you know le- uh, uh, tier one city to tier two city to tier three city to rule absolutely and it can just absolutely. keep moving instead of throwing it away that's right. so re- repair and replace and you know upgrade and keep using so i think one major thing that you are planning is defining the age of every product i think that is going to be very important so this is very important and then the second major thing is that uh, you know we could all recall in our childhood uh, whatever uh, goods or commodities that we purchased we used to have you know a manual about the product that made us you know we were so engaged i mean i'm sure when you all must have bought your first car you knew the car like uh, you know a household right but subsequently when we are kind of changing uh, the cars or the vehicles uh, over a span of say 2 to 3 years we have just uh, become say uh, a little indifferent to the requirements of the product and the second thing is that because uh, the manuals are not available and perhaps that uh, possibility of a self repair or uh, a possibility of maintaining your products or your own uh, you know goods in good shape uh, that somewhere we have lost so it requires you know maybe by a legal framework or comprehensive uh, say framework on right to repair to have uh, the manuals uh, in place so that people can understand and they can enjoy the product for a much larger Uh, you know span of time if they want to they should not be forced to uh, go for another product just because it's not functioning so uh, the manuals there would be also requirements of say uh, even to the third party repairers uh, easy comprehensible you know stuff so that people can actually uh, uh, you know take the goods to the third party repairer and he can do a good job now uh, we know that you know the companies are going to say or the industry will say that you know uh, the innovation will be stifled or what about our uh, say intellectual property uh, in such matters to what extent we can disclose so all these things i mean we would uh, want a more discussion on this and that is why i said that uh, this charcha has to go yes. on with the stakeholders चर्चा तो अभी शुरू हुई है <laughs> अभी आगे बहुत आगे ले जाना है इसको क्योंकि बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है बहुत ही बड़ा बड़ा एरिया है बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट एरिया है एक चीज वन थिंग वी लैव टू लुक एट इज फॉर रिपेयरेबिलिटी आई गेस द मेजर चेंज दैट नीड्स टू बी ब्रॉट अराउंड प्रॉब्लम इज दीपल डिजाइन दर प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज इफ द मैनुफेक्चर डोंट डिजाइन इट फॉर रिपेयरेबिलिटी दैट इज नॉट गुड वर्क so what is your view on that how do we get that to happen so you are quite right actually uh, it's the donors it's the funders it's the you know the elite uh, manufacturers around the world they will have to take uh, you know sit back and take a very uh, say conscious decision about this that uh, not everything that uh, we are producing as a new model has anything you know new about it it's just you know very very uh, superficial many times and it is only to push uh, you know the sale of these uh, products in the market uh, climate change is not uh, responsibility only of the governments or only of the citizens you know or only of the consumers 
So everyone will have to play a very active role uh, when it comes to, uh, say, taking a proactive role on circular economy, uh, to be standing out and be counted that, you know, we are for uh, safeguarding the environment and the future for our future generations. So I, I, I think uh, even the startups, I'm sure, uh, there'll be, you know, new kids uh, on the block who will understand that uh, there, there is a limit to which we can consume and to consume mindlessly uh, is not, you know, the need of the hour. I guess uh, the other area that is uh, uh, going to be pretty important from uh, what I can figure out is standardization. And, you know, uh, we were talking about the other day about chargers, remotes, you know, uh, multiple chargers and remotes are floating around in all our homes. So some, some, something on that needs to be done. Yeah, so uh, we are actually, uh, you know, going by the global practice also. I think uh, you can see that uh, more and more people are uh, understanding that uh, we can have devices which can respond to maybe just one uh, remote. You know, you don't need repo, uh, remotes for every individual product. And uh, so probably this is also uh, in the direction to be nudged. And uh, similarly for the charger. So what we are thinking is that maybe uh, we can have, a, you know, the basic charger uh, when for the very basic, uh, say, uh, mobile and the other for all the smart phones. So in that sense, maybe we have, you know, for uh, looking at the size of a country and looking at the number of people who are using mobiles, but uh, they are using of a very, say, uh, you know, with less features. So probably in this way, we can address uh, this issue also. So we need not be mad uh, in, you know, taking different chargers for the different set of mobiles that you have, you are having. That will also help uh, in reducing the burden of creating all kinds of chargers. So there's a movement of uh, get standardization of USB-C as a standard here. If USB-C becomes a standard, then it, it if it's there in every gadget, then they can all be charged by a single charger. Quite right. Yeah, so that's the kind of standardization. Problem. Standardization actually goes uh, hand in hand. Yes. And uh, you're quite right that if we have these standards in place, then probably uh, we'll be, you know, much faster in, uh, you know, achieving the desired. Yeah. Or I mean, today if you have Apple, you need a completely different charger. Samsung, you need a different charger. Then you need a different charger for a phone, tablet and uh, laptop all are different and that's an absolute disaster because what are we really doing at the end of two years three years everybody something gets spoiled they get thrown away it creates e-waste so major change needs to be uh, you know brought around here the other area that is going to be quite important is this whole area of software and hardware you know, you will need to specify something around software also. <laughs> because if a software comes around, uh, which is an upgrade two years later, and your current product doesn't work, those issues are also uh, somewhere, you know, you'll have to talk, you know, uh, communicate to manufacturers that you cannot have a software which doesn't work. It must work for five years with the same product. So whatever change you make in the software, the hardware must work. And that is a, another very big problem that is happening in, in products today. There was another major thing that was talked about many years ago and that I think Meti came out with a policy here which was called Manufacturer's Responsibility for Collection of E-Waste. Not got implemented. So the, there is also a policy uh, under the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, MOEF, and uh, there uh, also, you know, the waste, uh, the responsibility is on the producer of the waste. And who is the producer of waste? It is the consumer. So it starts with us. 
and uh, because you know the consumer is actually grappling with you know uh, his roles he is not satisfied at one end in actually enjoying to the full the product that he has purchased and at the same time he is also responsible under the you know the uh, framework uh, to be uh, segregating the waste and you know to be reducing the waste and to be reusing so without right to repair how do we expect the consumers to actually play their responsibility uh, i mean if they wish to in full so that is why you know the criticism that it has not taken off so we have to have that ecosystem uh, built in place which uh, supports uh, the producer of the e waste or the waste uh, to ensure that uh, you know he is able to uh, comply with all the three Rs, yes. which is reduce reduce his consumption, uh, and how he can do it, he can only do it if he is able to reuse the product, uh, you know, again and again, and for a reasonable uh, life of the product, and then recycle if possible. I just wanted to make another point that you know while uh, in the earlier session. Uh, we were, uh, I mean, the speakers were actually discussing about, uh, you know, the remittances that we got from uh, nursing and from, say, uh, you know, the education. I think repair holds another great possibility because, uh, fortunately for our country, we've had, uh, you know, a crop of uh, repairers available to us. We've never recognized them, neither the government nor the entrepreneurs, but they have existed for us. And it is just a matter of standardizing products. It's just a matter of uh, putting the ecosystem in place and making sure that actually for the repairer also, it's a, uh, it's a great uh, say skill to have and he can also contribute uh, into the circular economy. Actually, uh, 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 my foundation, Epic, we've done some research on this whole idea of uh, 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 smartphones. And in the smartphone area, we discovered that uh, today itself in India, everybody uses smartphones in three cycles. So it seems to get used first in a big city, then it goes to a second city, then it goes to a third city. But the opportunity for repairs and refurbishment, the total opportunity size is estimated by us to be $10 billion. That's it's a very big sum. And fundamentally, what does it mean? That $10 billion is all about people. Some pieces are there for spares, etc. Cost of spares. But it's the jobs that it will get created as a result of $10 billion opportunity domestically. And as we were researching further, we figured out that there is a $20 billion opportunity for exports. So I think the interesting part is that from just repairing a product, uh, you know, uh, a product A, product B, product C, we could actually be setting up a large number of repair factories all over the country. Yeah, that's very exciting actually. Yeah. Huge numbers. Huge numbers. So if you look at a ten billion dollar opportunity, I'm 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 sure you will have at least a hundred odd factories getting set up all over the country. Each of these hundred factories will have two or three shifts. It will employ 300, 400 people. So that's a very very large piece. It's like uh, you know something like uh, you know when the call centers. Uh, you know, yes. they were in uh, different countries and then uh, gradually they all moved to India. Yes. You know, because yes. It, it was not only more efficient, uh, cheaper maybe, we can say. But then I think uh, we are uh, providing these services to, I think, any number of, uh, say, great companies. Many, many. And global companies globally, are using us. Yeah, yeah. globally. We are actually uh, providing the service to so many people. So similarly, I think your idea is uh, 
fundamentally very very uh, you know it's mind blowing actually yeah. because to think of this uh, it will not only create uh, jobs it will also create wealth by yes you see uh, one thing we discovered when i was running hcl one day uh, one of my senior managers we were actually marketing and manufacturing large hewlett packard computers so my manager came in and said boss ye cost of spare is so high i mean why do i have to buy the whole board why can't i repair it here so i told him i said look if you start repairing your warranty will be void which is what the manufacturer says he says koi baat nahi try karke dekhte hain and we started repairing motherboards of large hp computers in india at component level so the capability set in india is phenomenal in terms of being able to repair to the component level now nobody in the west does component level repair they just replace cards they replace sub assemblies no repair is done so just imagine the opportunity for us as a country when we can actually bring products from all over the world and uh, you know repair them and send them back i think the big challenge that i'm seeing which is something that maybe you may want to Uh, talk to customs about is how do we enable the customs to allow our products to come in without you know today they ask you uh, serial number दीजिए part number दीजिए हर चीज का serial number part number अगर हम देने लगे तो वो तो time निकल जाएगा today in Poland they are doing exactly this the turnaround time is one day average turnaround time in India is thirty days but there is no big deal in this. customs has to just say yes this is an accepted practice self certification just the way software started just the way call center started you can set up an area in sez and get going so i think this is something that a follow on to your policy which can create many many more jobs than we would have ever imagined right so true i mean this should create a paradigm shift in the Uh, opportunities that yes. present